Hi, my name's uh, Dr. Karen Ingham, and I'm an artist, a designer, a writer, and I'm currently also a reader in art, science, and technology interactions at Swansea Metropolitan University. Pollinator frogs, which I, I realise is a slightly strange named subject, is actually um, a series of prototype fabrics and clothing designed to attract endangered pollinating insects. And it represents, if you like, a kind of um, engagement with environmental issues, particularly the plight of the pollinators. So we may be aware of the bee. The plight of the bee is something now that's had a lot of publicity. But the bee is only one of many winged pollinators, insect pollinators, that are endangered. Uh, they're endangered because of aggressive farming practices, poor land management, urban development, use of pesticides. In the case of the bee, the varroa mites or parasitic infections. There's a whole range of issues affecting uh, um, the pollinators. One of them is that the plants on which they depend, so their host plants or the plants where they have a mutual relationship, the plants themselves are endangered. And they're endangered again because we have less and less meadow, we have less and less wild areas. And plants that we consider to be weeds often, you know, wildflowers, uh, dandelion for example, they're actually very important plants in the pollination cycle. So it's a very complex ecological issue. And pollinator frogs is about eco-fashion. It's wearable technology, wearable designs that bring to the public these issues. It's like wearing the art. It's wearing the science. So each pollinator frog, in fact, is a little kind of mini natural history lesson or a mini science lesson about a particular pollinating insect with its host plant. And one of the ways I wanted to make this very vivid and very unusual was to really emphasize the role of pollen itself. And so I've worked with microscopists at Swansea University to uh, create enlarged pollen grains under, again, an electron scanning microscopy unit with a cryogenic chamber. Now, this is fantastic because it means you can make absolutely beautiful structures of the pollen and then incorporate that into the design. I've also worked with the Welsh Centre for Printing and Coating at Swansea University they've been trialling with me the idea that we could maybe coat the fabrics with a nectar-like substitute, so sucrose, frucro fructose and xanthan gum as a binder, and that maybe by putting these coatings on the, on the clothes that the insects would get a little feed when they come to them. So it's not that the insects are pollinating anything, but the insects, in order to pollinate, need to be fed. So if their traditional food sources are endangered, the idea is you give them this little feed, it gives them the energy to go out and pollinate, and that's kind of what the public engagement aspect is about. I've recently been trialling this in New Zealand as part of the big event there called SCANS, and SCANS is New Zealand's premier art, science, technology and environment event. It happens every two years. And it was great while I was over there because I did a lot of public engagement. Um, I took the pollinator frocks on video walkabout, uploaded them to YouTube, and while I was there, um, Quite surprisingly, it was picked up by the press, at least surprising to me, because I didn't know much about it till I got back to the UK. And there's been quite a lot of interest in the pollinator frogs, and I think that's because it's touched a chord. And it's, it's a way of using design, art, science, technology, in a way that the public understand, because the public love design. You can speak to people about quite important issues through design, because what really this project is about, like all of my other projects really, it's about that interaction, that collaboration, and that innovation that these um, relationships can bring. So it's a new way of thinking, a new way of looking, a new way of applying ideas that um, has a, a broader meaning, not just within the arts and the sciences, but you know, within the public um, realm as well. Um, where the Pollinator Frogs project is now is um, I'm out having to uh, look quite carefully at how these this wearable science, if you, if you like, can be taken forward. One of the things I've realised is, while it's fantastic in terms of the public engagement, um, you know, to have frocks that may, may attract insects, and there has been some interaction with butterflies and with bees, you can't really actually put these in the public domain and, say, sell them without it having a possible detrimental effect. In other words, if you buy one of these, you don't want to be wearing it and get stung by a bee. So um, I'm not going to use the coatings um, if and when these um, products go into sale. And if they go into sales, what I want to do is I want to use a very large portion of the money from any sales to go towards the charities that are working on the pollination issues, so charities like Bug Life, Plant Life, specialist um, organisations and charities that are working on these issues. 
I think that's probably the best way to affect real change here, is by raising money that can help them do their job. Hopefully we can um, develop an offshoot from this public engagement project that can be taken forward um, into different areas. We're hoping to do a catwalk show in London, possibly the Science Museum, possibly the Grant Museum of Zoology. So there's a lot more things planned for pollinator frogs and it's a space that you kind of, what do I say, watch this space, I think. <laughs>